Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's Saturday night. We are in the Aqua Dome, and this is Minor League Esports presented by APM Music. I'm so excited to be here. We're starting off tonight with the Foundation League. Like I said, I'm Lars Dude. I'll be your color commentator. And joining me here tonight is Hunted in the casted booth for your play-by-play. -play. Hunted, how are you doing tonight? Hey, I'm doing just perfect here tonight. It's, uh, it's uh, an awesome week to get things started for the Foundation League, and, you know, more than happy to be in the booth with you again. Yeah, it's always fun casting with you, Hunted. So this matchup tonight, we've got the Rhinos and the Comets, two teams both on the power rankings for Foundation League. We've got the Comets sitting at number 10, working their way up two spots from last week. And then we've got the Rhinos at number two, falling down from first last week. So any predictions, Hunted, off the bat here? Well, I mean, the the the, uh, the Rhinos are looking pretty good, as you mentioned, coming into this one. They might be moving down a little bit on those power rankings but i don't think that's gonna let the uh, it's not gonna really affect them here coming into this matchup uh i don't know they're looking to continue their overall hot streak they're three and oh to start the season and uh, it's gonna be much to do for the comets to try to shut them down here yeah, the big thing to note here is the Foundation League is 16 franchises instead of the normal 32. So 10th on the power rankings is a little more significant spread than it is in some of the other leagues we have here. The Comets are sitting 7-8 and eight for record of games and the Rhinos 12-3. and three, And that is just a powerful combination to go up against for this Comets team. As we move in here to the match... I think we can go ahead and let our players know that it is time to get going here. We've got, on the side of the Comets, Otaku Expert and Stufi versus Bean Machine and Crazy Cow for the Rhinos. And we are underway with our first of five games here tonight. And in that pink are the Comets as Team Stufi and Otaku Expert. And then for the Rhinos in that white bean machine crazy cow going to be an important first game would love to see the comets come out strong looking for a uh, a good start here try to take it to the rhinos don't let them settle in to this series as bean machine just going to try to play it out of his own zone stoopy come out in front will be played away to the corner here comes crazy cow to play it along in the first 30 seconds gone not a whole lot to write home about, but looks like both teams just trying to settle into the series. Yeah, you mentioned something early on here, and that's momentum, and I know we mention it every single cast we do, but it's so important, and for the Comets with this uphill battle against this powerful Rhinos team, it's gonna be so important to take the first goals and the first couple of games here off of them. And so far, I've liked what I've seen. Stufi staying on the ball with no boost, continuing to push center, and we've got a lot of offensive pressure from the midfield all the way up to the back wall out of the Comets down on the Rhinos end. Well, it is uh, going to be interesting to watch Stufi Leading his team in goals. He's got 21 already this season. We'll see if he can tack on another one here. Crazy Cow. Solid block. And a good start for the Rhinos. So they've been on the defensive side. Stufi again trying to break through. It's the machine this time. Credited with the save. Unfortunate with there. And Stufi looks, looks like a missile. Just in and out of this zone. Trying to break through this defense. And so far, the Rhinos have shut the door. So Stufi is a name I recognize and so far a name to be reckoned with. But there, a little bit of a miscue on behalf of the Comets and a good demo to open up the net, but just Rhinos cannot quite find the net. It's a good opportunity, and if they keep those opportunities up, it's going to lead the goals. We'll get it out of the zone. It was a good demo. The shot just a little bit wide there from the Rhinos. They still don't have an officially registered shot. This one's going to bounce out to the midfield line. Here comes Bean Machine rotating forward. Aku Expert will knock it up. And now Crazy Cow into the corner. It's about half time here. Game number one. Still no score. Rather interesting, especially in a twos game and, and how early we are in the series to have nobody on the board at half time in the first game. You say that, but here's an opportunity. Stufi able to get back and clear it away. I think something that's more prevalent or I should say less prevalent as you go up in the ranks is that feeling out period. 
And as we're sitting in the Foundation League right now, it is the lowest league in MLE. We've got players only up to, I believe, the Diamond 1 level. So that feeling each other out period is going to last longer than it does with, say, a Champ League, Master League, or Premier League game where they're going to dive straight in. They know how they want to play. And they're going to take more time to figure it out, and it's going to lead to these extended lead-off periods, maybe a little scoreless. Oh, still no score in this series. Back and forth battle between the Comets and Rhinos in game one. As this is out in front, the machine will poke it along. And be able to rotate in front of this one. Otaku will send it onward. It's now the machine. He's got to contend with this off his own back wall. Comes off the ceiling. Can't quite find the touch. Here's Stoofy out of the corner. Almost had crazy cow beat there. But again, the Rhinos defense. Going to come up strong, and it's worth noting the the rotations as Crazy Cow couldn't quite get that one out in front. But the rotations from both teams have been very responsible, and it's uh, it's very interesting to see that at this level. And honestly, this is much better than some of the higher level teams we see. I think that maybe what is contributing so strongly to our scoreless game here, because at this foundation, like you don't see tons and tons of mechanical ability, but when you get both teams making really solid rotations, that sort of lack of mechanical ability is going to be very difficult to overcome a good solid rotation. A lot of the times it comes down to a mistake. Really, at all levels, it feels like in these defensive struggles, that one mistake gonna open something up is stupid. Just couldn't quite get a touch on that one. It does stay out though, and we continue to play on. 25 seconds left to go. Bean Machine, no touch. Stoofy's there, but he can't get back to it. Crazy Cow has to cut across. This will be played out of the corner now. As we're into the final 15, maybe overtime here in game one. Maybe one more opportunity here for the Rhinos. Down to Bean Machine. Otaku Expert's going to cut it off. Hustling back are the defenders for the Rhinos. This is out in front, but it won't come to pass. As now we are in overtime, scoreless game one, Comets and Rhino. And nice even matchup, not indicative of the score lines coming in, but that is a beautiful demo out of the Rhinos to clear the net. And Bean Machine able to tuck that one behind the defender and get this first goal of the series and get the Rhinos off to a good lead. And a low scoring game one decided by the Rhinos. And again, we talked about how stalwart the Rhinos defense was, and it might even be a little bit of a frustration point here for the Comets. They looked pretty good to start things off. They had control for a majority of that first half of the game. Things evened out a little bit in the second half, but to, to walk away from this game without a goal, even with all the control that you had, must be frustrating. Absolutely. Stufi, again, big standout here for me. The thing I really want to harp on, and I know I've already said it so far in the first match, is Stufi does an excellent job staying on the ball and keeping pressure upfield despite not having boost. That's something you don't see. Even at the champ league level, players have a nasty habit of they get low on boost, so they bail on the ball and go hunting for boost somewhere. Even, you know, champ league, they may go look for pennies academy and foundation they go look for those big boosts but stufi doing an excellent job keeping pressure upfield and it's resulting in great opportunities comets just need to find a way to finish on them that rhino's defensive rotation is so solid i think the other thing i want to see out of the comments is otaku expert not hugely present throughout that series you can see on the score line here 90 points and goose eggs i think if otaku expert can step up a little bit more and we get a good stufi otaku expert combo it's going to be really powerful and be enough to take down this rhinos team well they couldn't quite combine for a goal there in the first game still hunting for that first one as we start game number two it was a one nothing decision but it took overtime a bunch of an overtime fair just a couple of seconds but did require overtime though the rhinos walked away with a lead as otaku expert He'll change the narrative this time. The Comets on the board, first eight seconds. And that is, again, great pressure out of Stoopy to keep that one downfield and keep the Rhinos guessing as to what's coming next. They get a little scramble, and Otaku Expert, great top 90 pick, and that's exactly what I wanted. What did we ask for in the intermission? Otaku Expert, step up, get on the board, and here, less than 10 seconds in, delivers. He does, and this will put the Rhinos in a bit of a tough spot as Stoofy will score as well out of the corner. And all of that talk of the staunch Rhinos defense crumbling now 
a two goal lead here for the Comets and just a mix up in the corner for the Rhino. 18 seconds in, that is not a lot of time to score two goals. Good presence out of the Comets. And now we see what happens at a lot of levels of different, different levels of Rocket League, where once a team that was doing great on defense starts to get scored on, they just crumble and fall apart. So it's gonna be very important for the Rhinos here to maintain the composure they had all the way through game one and not start to panic when they see that Comets pressure coming. Down by two now, the Rhinos looking to charge their way back. This crazy cow sneaks one home. Otaku Expert was there, but he didn't quite expect that. That is a nice shot, 2-1. I think Otaku Expert not expecting the cut, looking to get that one off the wall, or maybe thinking they had a little bit more time, it was going to be a softer touch. And just like you said, it's a great shot out of uh, Crazy Cow to tuck that one into the corner and keep that away from the defender. 2-1 now as it might just be a two-goal lead again it will be stoopy trying to take the giveaway there crazy cow probably going to want this one back already four goals scored here lars we're not even a minute old what happened to this area i think it's I don't want to say I told you so, but I think it's what I said. When you start to get pressure on good defenses, if they're not used to being down, they start to crumble. Crazy Cow, missed touch, and then Stufi again doing just such an excellent job keeping pressure forward. If you're the Rhinos, you need to take advantage of that. The Comets are playing aggressively upfield, and it's paying off for them, but if you can get one good clear past them, they're going to be very vulnerable. Well, back to this two goal deficit. Might be three. Now it is. Great pass, better finish. And the Comets looking to tie up the series. Still a lot of time left on the board, but they're able to put four up in the first minute, 10 seconds. And it's it's two goals apiece as well, Lars. That's the important bit. They're, sh they're spreading the wealth here. Stupi has two assists but two goals per player. And right now the Rhinos just really can't seem to find their footing. I think the big thing we're seeing with the Rhinos is they're spending so much time in the defensive end. The best defense is a good offense. And there, Crazy Cow able to tuck it in off the touch from Otaku, can't quite get it away and ends up throwing that in the nice top corner pick. It looks like these teams, they're, they're making up for the lack of goals of last game. They're <laughs> just getting them all out of the way. A little bit earlier on here. Maybe they just forgot, got to score goals to win games, but either way, six in the first minute 30. However, the Riders do find themselves down by two and would love to see maybe six more. I'm sure they'd love them to be white if possible, as this is going to be a Taku expert trying to get around the machine. In the, at the midfield line, Crazy Cow going to rotate forward. This pops way up high. It's goofy now. Bounce this one along. The machine collects. Try to keep it in. Three minutes left to go as this is over Bean Machine's head. Maybe an opportunity here for Stoopy. He throws that on net. Oh, that's just in. No challenge from the Rhino's defender, and it's 5-2. That's a, a great shot out of Stoopy. Let's not discredit that. That's good. Waiting for that to come off the bounce to get that little bit of extra power and pop. Crazy Cow, I'm not sure what was going on there. Maybe didn't have boost, thought they couldn't get up to it, or maybe thought that was going to go crossbar, and that Bean Machine was going to be able to scoop that away after it came back down. But either way, the Comets sort of running away with this game here. That was an interesting kickoff from the Comets. Almost got them punished if Otaku Extra wasn't able to find that touch. Looked like a, almost like a fake, but a cheating fake kickoff. I'm not sure what we just saw, but it didn't turn into too much. However, the offense, they'll come out of it for the Rhinos. This Bean Machine just trying to find an opening. That crazy cow on the defensive side. He'll wait for Stufi's touch. And now as halftime comes and goes here, game number two, it's really on the Rhinos to try to find what they can on the offensive side. I know that we've uh, been talking about trying to put some pressure on the pink half as Stufi has to try to make a save. It's off the post from Bean Machine. But when did the risk start being taken here by the Rhinos? It uh, well, I think they have been taking some risks, at least in, in particular with Bean Machine. We saw Bean Machine attempt a ceiling shot earlier, going for some mechanical plays off the wall. And honestly, it's great to see them trying to find something to get past this Comets defense, but I think it's the wrong thing. We haven't seen a lot of miscues and mistouches or just straight up misses, as here's an opportunity from Stoofy with a great stuff, and I will come back to that later. 
Uh, that This is just a quick play out of the corner. Instantly finds himself in a one-on-one. -on -one. And Bean Machine, tough challenge there. Almost had what it took to deflect that into the corner. But regardless, a four-goal affair now. Minute 40 left to go. And again, spreading the love. Though it is stupid with four for the Comets. Four goals on four shots as well. Quite good. For Stoopy here in this game, and we talked about him as being the goal or the uh, leading goal scorer for squad at 21 coming into this one was quiet in game one, certainly stepping up to the plate here in the second. Absolutely. And and like I said, I think the big thing we're going to need to see out of the Rhinos to counter this Comet's power, especially with Stoopy here doing a great job. Consistent mechanics is that's a close one. But again, Stoopy in the way is not to look for those mechanical plays, but they're not making a lot of mistouches, pick up the speed. It's great that you're not whiffing, you're not making mistouches, but if you're not doing that, then you're not going fast enough. You should be missing every once in a while as you try to outpace your opponents. Well, there's Stoopy again, right out in front. He'll pack on a fifth. It's at 7-2 now. Again, five goals on five shots for Stoopy. Rhinos. Definitely going to start looking forward to game number three. The series will be tied at one. Things definitely need to change here for the white side as really it's been a rather close series. I mean, game number one, of course, no goals being scored. But this is what I thought we'd see out of game one with all of the Comets pressure. It was a great Rhino's defensive effort, but now this time it seems like the comments have solved that the case here of the rhinos defense and it's going to be up to the rhinos to not play as much defense as they have been absolutely and i think almost at this point it's almost not worth talking about the goals as they just come so fast out of the comments here they put one in after another but like you said they need to spend less time on defense the rhinos are not doing a great job first in the transitions they're getting beat through the transitions allowing the comments to take goals as b machine again off the wall looking for some mechanical plays but they're not doing a good job of making the quick transitions back on defense and then when they do manage to make that initial stop they're getting scrambled and they're not getting the ball clear of the net and they need to do a better job when they get the opportunity to get the ball away from their net well we had one goal in game one it looks like we're going to end on 11 goals here in the second nine of them pink the rhinos a lot of work to do heading into game number three, but we will be tied up as we mentioned. And uh, these kind of games, they feel a whole lot longer than they actually actually are, new, or Lars. And, and to the team defending in the Rhinos, it, it feels like an eternity. I mean, you just want these games over. You want to head into the next game. I mean, how does that affect players, especially those that may not have experience with uh, suffering losses like these in tournaments. I think the big thing to note here is it get, it wears on your nerves because you say it, it feels long and part of that is because it is long. You spend so much time watching replays of your opponent's score again and again and again and it wears on your nerves and it wears you out. So the big thing here is going to be can the Rhinos come back? That's one of the nice things about Foundation League is anything can happen. We saw that first game go 0-0 with the overtime goal to win it and now we've got this 9-2 scoreline. Uh, quick point of order there. Stufi, 6 for 6, 100% shooting and 100% goal participation out of Stufi getting those three assists to Ataku. The Rhinos, we've said it already, need to get better about clearing the ball away from their net, getting it off the defensive end, moving forward and getting pressure on the Comets end. We don't really know how the Comets would fare against a sustained Rhinos attack because they just don't sustain. They don't do a good job of getting it out of their end and they don't do a good job of containing it in the Comets end where the Comets are so quick to clear and score in transition. It seems like a task easier said than done here for the Rhinos. It's been a very difficult time for them through the midfield. Stoopy in particular. But he seems to be hyperactive at that midfield line. Here he is again, taking a quick shot. That will be the first of the game and right back where they left off the Comets four seconds in. Quick face-off goals are not the end of the world. They happen at every level, and there's not a whole lot you can do out of it, do about it because you're by nature of a face-off out of position, and it just happens. So if you're the Rhinos, do not let this be a momentum killer for you. 
do not let this be where the the comets run away with this game. Here comes B and Machine. Look at the equalize. One touch, two touches. After crazy cow, they score a beautiful setup from B Machine, and we're tied at one. And that is B Machine. Those mechanical plays finally coming out. Definitely looking for the double, and you love to see it, but. That's one place where I mentioned it earlier. We don't know what the Comets do against a sustained attack, and all it takes is those quick follow-up shots. If the Rhinos can get the ball downfield, they don't need to score on that first attempt because the first attempt will draw the Comets' defense away from the net, and then you could follow it up with a quick shot. Great way to equalize. Bean Machine and Crazy Cow both getting involved in the offense there. Makes it a one-all game. 30 seconds in here as Stoopy out of the corner. This one's going to bounce on the machine. He's able to read it. Still Stoopy wanting to keep the pressure on. I'll just bounce out to a taco expert. He dives at that one and the machine will play it away. Grabbing boost. Kind of unload this one through the midfield line. Crazy Cow will turn on it now. Aku able to play that one away in the first minute gone still tied up at one this could be dangerous out in front still there is Stoopy and he'll score in the Comets back in the lead and this is that combination we see again where the Comets do a really great job keeping pressure upfield and the Rhinos not doing a great job of getting it clear of the net they pushed that one upfield a little too aggressively given both players were on the back wall they needed to push that one through the corner and cut that angle down to make it a much more difficult shot Funnel bounce just a bit wide. Almost a kickoff goal yet again for the Rhinos. We'll see if they can turn this into another equalizer. Bean Machine up Ooh. the airport. Oh, he gets a touch over Stoopy, but it does bounce right to Otaku. And the Comets will clear it away. Crazy Cow doing all they can do to try to play it towards the sidewall. Now this one will bounce. Here comes Bean Machine. Can't quite get around Otaku and back into the Rhino's corner we go. Stoopy now playing it out in front. Nobody home. Score. 3-1 Rhino, or I'm sorry, 3-1 for the Comets. And again, looking to start to turn this game on its head. That's a really nice read about a Stoofy through the corner. Those corners can be surprisingly tricky to read, and the ball can do kind of screwy things that maybe you wouldn't expect naturally from a ball to do through a corner because they're not perfectly round. They're flat segment through the corner there. So it's a great read out of Stoopy to get down center and great pressure out of Otaku to finish on it. I think what we're seeing here isn't a mechanical deficit on either side. If anything, the Rhinos have the mechanical advantage with Beam Machine here, getting very aggressive mechanically. But speaking of aggression, the Comets are very aggressive in their play style, where the Rhinos playing a little bit more passive. They like to drop someone way back to play defense, and you can see where that difference comes. I'd like to see the Rhinos get a little more aggressive in their play style and get more shots on net on the comments. It does certainly seem as though Crazy Cow has been quite hesitant throughout these last couple of games. It's opened up some space for the comments as Crazy Cow now trying to play this out of the corner. Has Bean Machine waiting out in front. Solid touch there by Stu V, and it will bounce back to the midfield line. Who bumped off the ball there was Bean Machine, but Crazy Cow gonna hustle this one forward. Can't quite get around Stu V yet again. The ball at the midfield line played back into the zone. 3 1, 2 0, 5 left to go. The Comets looking to put themselves ahead by a game heading into game number four. And so far, it's been another solid defensive effort from the big side. Which, as I was about to give credit to the Rhinos, there we see yet again that Comets upfield pressure doing a great job and leaving the Rhinos scrambled in a rare mistouch in this game as Bean Machine touches that one center, which is something I did want to touch on, is both of these teams doing a good job with the rotations, they're doing a good job with the communication, they're not seeing a lot of double commits or anything like that, and they very rarely make mistouches. So, it's great to see. Again, I'd like to see a little more speed when actually force yourself to make some mistakes because you're trying to go so fast. But to the credit of both sides of this ball, they're doing a great job in those fundamental aspects as Bean Machine looking to dunk over top. Can't quite make that one work as Crazy Cow now trying to play it out of his own corner and only a minute 25 left to go. Three goals needed for the Rhinos. The Taku expert pops this one up. Bean Machine 
Can't quite find the touch. Scoopy will rush in, takes the shot, and there's another one. 5-1 now for the Comets, Stoopy with four. It took a little longer for the floodgates to open for the Comets, but we see them running away with this one again. And really, I, no discredit to Otaku. They've done a great job getting pressure up field. They've been aggressive. They, it's, it's gotten them a goal and two assists. But Stoofy, four goals on six shots. It's not the 100% shooting they had in the last game, but that's still impressive, especially at this level. When you have that level of accuracy and aggression, it's going to be extremely difficult for any Foundation League team to come back against that. Just be a machine with a response, top shelf. No challenge there from the Comets, and this starts with the Rhinos just putting the pressure on. A bit of a fortunate with there from Crazy Cal sets up Bean Machine, and we're at least a little bit closer. 5 3. 5 2, sorry, three goals separate them. This has been. It's exactly what I asked. I hate to be that guy and be like, hey, I was right. But when we see the Rhinos get pressure and get follow up shots, we see them get goals. And if they can just keep doing that, then the, the Comets have a potential to crumble here, and the Rhinos can take a couple of games off them. Oh, looks like time is going to be expiring here for the Rhinos, and they're going to have to turn their sights to game number four if they want a chance in the series and to hold on to their perfect record throughout the season. As Stoofy is going to lay that one up for Otaku Expert. They'll get another one. 6-2 now with 19 seconds left to go. And coming into this, we preface this uh, series. We mentioned Rhinos. 3-0 coming into this game. They've, they, here, assuming that this holds, they've lost almost double the amount of games or, or you know they, they've almost reached their total losses in games here just against the comet who we really were not too terribly hot on coming in but it's been a great lineup that this comet's lineup roster whatever you want to call it has looked so very good together stufi and otaku have played off one another great in this series and it's been all the riders could do just to keep up with it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. We were a little down on the Comets team coming into this. They had a sub 500 record. And as they move through this, they've now advanced that to a, assuming the series had ended right here, they've advanced that to a positive record by getting these two wins. But the Rhinos not coming together. We saw Otaku not really playing up in that first game and that led to a Rhinos win. But now that we've got that full Otaku Stufi coupling, they're just unstoppable on the field. The Rhinos, we've said it again and again and again, what they need to start scoring goals on the Comets. And I think at this point, their defense is reasonably solid. They do need to get the ball clear of their net a little bit quicker, give the Comets fewer opportunities, but I don't think that's their weak spot right now. They're just not finishing on the front end. We can see in the stat line here, the Comets had nine shots, the Rhinos had eight, but they're just not mm -hmm. getting good, solid shooting opportunities. They're not pulling the Comets away from the net. They're not screwing with their rotations, so maybe get some bumps and demos to disrupt those rotations and get some rebound shots, which will also throw the Comets off in their positioning and give you better opportunities to score goals and win these games. And again, we mentioned just how good that Comets defense was in those past two games. And really, you can even make the case in the first game. They only let in the one goal in overtime to drop that game. And so far, the Rhinos have not had the answer to break through that defense. But the Comets most certainly have, and that's going to be the big thing. What can the Rhinos do? To break through this time around as we head into game number four now their backs against the wall can't drop this one if you want to win the series however this is uh rocket league is, is a game ooh, of inches and the mission is just going to come up a bit short there you got a touch on it couldn't quite clear it away and again the comments going to take a one goal lead and maybe the narrative will continue to hold the team who scores first has won every game so far you know, it's you mentioned it's a game of inches. Bean Machine inches off of saving that ball and touching it clear, and it's just unfortunate. They made a good read getting back, and they tried to play it through the corner just like we asked them to. Just a little bit of a missed touch. We can see them coming apart a little bit at the seams. I think the other thing that the Rhinos can do to get some goals here is beat the Comets in transition. The Comets like to play up that aggressive play style. If you can bait them up onto your back wall and then clear it long, you'll get good opportunities on open nets. 
Here comes me and Machine. He's hustling down the sidewall now. Snoofy and Otaku rotating back. Good uh, challenge on that back wall there by Snoofy. We'll send Otaku Expert away. No problem for Crazy Cow, though. Grabbing Boost and now out of the corner. Just trying to get the ball clear. Snoofy unable to keep it in. Otaku Expert will at the line, but here's Bean Machine. Opportunity now if you can get around Snoofy, but again, Turned around at the midfield line, and this is exactly what the Comets have been doing all series long. Just hard midfield defense, not letting anything by. And when they have been beat at the midfield, they're in good position. They're hustling back, though this could be one of the rare times they get caught, and they will. Bead machine, an open net. And again, it's just a win at the line, and there you go. It's 1-1. It's those, it's those plays in transition. It's so difficult to get back effectively on defense. We know that the Comets are capable of making saves in transition because it's a talented team, but it's just difficult. You're gonna not be in a settled rotation. It's awkward to be looking back at the ball trying to make a save. The Rhinos can score goals like that all day long, but like you said, the Comets doing an excellent job with that midfield play. It's indicative of a higher level of play. Where's the other place you see really good, solid midfield challenges in the play style? Premier League. You know, and to see these players at the Foundation League adapting to that play style is awesome to see. Ooh, that's a bit of a miss there for Bean Machine and Otaku Expert. All over it makes it a 2-1 game. As just throwing it against the pack wall, sometimes it'll pay off. Bean Machine thought he had control over it, but unfortunately no touch, and that will be a Comets lead yet again. It has been only Comets in the lead throughout the series. I know paddling in game four, but still find themselves down. And this one does feel a lot closer. I will, for uh, for the record, I will say that the Rhinos certainly look to have come out here to try to challenge the Comets. They're not just going to roll over in the series. But still, tough to break through this defense as Beam Machine will do it again. Baits out the defender and we're tied to two. I was just thinking to myself as you were saying that the big difference we've seen here out of the Rhinos is they've gotten more aggressive. They're challenging in midfield and challenging up against the net and right there a great setup from Crazy Cow. Good challenge in midfield off the back wall. It comes right back out and leaves the comments out of position and Beam Machine easy goal. Here we are. Not at it too. Halftime approaches. Stoofy almost cut that one in. Crazy Cow ready and waiting on the goal line. Solid save. This is a crucial moment here for the Rhinos. They've tied the game twice now. And as time continues to tick away, need to find this next goal. Can't give this one up Ooh. here. Bean Machine nearly gets a touch on it. But once again, it's an Otaku Expert to break the tie and the Comets back in the lead. Otaku Expert showing up a little bit as a clutch player here. That's nice to see, especially as we've talked so much about Stoopy. Bean Machine, smart play. I really like what they were doing there, defending aggressively from the back wall. They didn't panic because they were up on the wall as that shot was coming. They said, hey, I know I can get down and make the save. And they could. It was just a little bit of mechanical deficit that kept it away. And that's kind of been the story, Bean Machine. Great presence of mind and positioning and what's possible on the field. They just are a little short on the mechanical end to actually make it happen. And I love to see it. I, I'm rooting for them to get some of these great mechanical plays pulled off here. They need something to happen. The next minute 50, need a goal. The Blues try to force overtime. Beam Machine had an opening there. He gets a second touch, but Stoofy able to block that one away. And back the other way and go to Comets. I don't think Dimitri realized how open the net was on his original shot. Either way, it does stay out. Solid effort by the striker. Still, however, got to play defense now as a cocker expert's going to take the giveaway, complete his hat trick, and it's 4 2. That's so difficult when you're back by yourself. It was the right move from Crazy Cow to go up and make the challenge. Just gets beat in the 50. And then kind of the story of the series, the Rhinos not getting the ball clear of the net, leaving it out front. And as this aggressive comments team comes up, if you give them that opportunity, they're going to take it. You know they're upfield challenge. This one right off the kickoff. The Rhinos will get it back. Bean Machine. Trying to respond with a hat trick of their own as makes it a 4-3 game with a minute 20 left to go. And now the Rhinos again 
One goal away from tying things up and potentially forcing overtime here. Not a ton of time left on the board. Just over 70 seconds. Speed machine. Throw this back into the zone. Stoopy out of the corner. Crazy cow. Rotates forward. Makes the challenge. Otaku expert. Left alone on the goal line. Mean machine there to the challenge. It's bouncing dangerously out of front. Crazy cow's up for it. Shot on goal. He scores. We're tied at four and just under a minute left to go. And that is a name we haven't mentioned a whole lot in a positive light so far in this series, but crazy cow. Lots of good power and accuracy on that shot to get it home. That's just a good, clean shot. I also want to give credit on the defensive end. Has four saves so far this game. Definitely keeping the Rhinos alive. And to that point, this is still anybody's series. We've seen the Comets be absolutely dominant through game two and three with those crutching victories but we've seen the Rhinos come alive here in game four. Clock kicking down, they're making the comeback. They're getting it back. They just need to find a lead and stop tying it up from behind. That's a misplay by Stufi, and then that's wide open. Bean Machine will put the Rhinos in the lead here. Five to four in the first lead of the series for the Rhinos. Will this be enough to send us to a game five tied at two? As we mentioned, Foundation League, anything can happen. If you were to just watch that second and third game from this series, you'd say, oh, Comets win this all day long with the Rhinos. Leachy loves to say game four is where you really see what players are made of. And here, Rhinos making a very strong argument as to why they should get to go on to the game five decider and get a real shot at winning this. Just need to hold on for the last 15 seconds, Beating Machine. Gonna waste a lot of time though, gives the ball up to Stoofy and this could lead to a Comets counterattack. Right down in front, Stoofy, no touch, had an opening and Bean Machine will turn to send it onward. Two seconds left now, right out in front, Stoofy keeps it up in the air for the moment, it'll fall down and that will do it. We're headed to a game five, tied at two. Can the Rhinos keep their undefeated season alive? Or will the Comets? Pull out the upset. It all comes down to one five-minute game of Rocket League. This is what we love about MLE is you get these game five deciders. I don't know how many times I've been casting this season so far, and we've gone to game five deciders. And again, you would have never expected this after watching those first few games, that first feel each other out game and nothing really happening, and then Comets running away game two and three. But now the Rhinos, what a game. So clutch to come back less than a minute to go to take their first lead of the series except for that you know overtime goal which if you could really call that a lead more than just a win but what a turn and if this isn't the level of excitement that convinces you to join emily i don't know what will so if you do want to join us emilysports.gg slash apply head over to the website fill the application get on one of these teams get on these streams and get in some get in on some of this exciting action i know our missions team's great dj would love to get you on his way on your way to on one of these teams also on the emily sports website we've got merch stats power rankings and articles it's a great time everything you expect from a competitive league so emily sports.gg and emily emily sports.gg slash apply that's my pick please do that <laughs> but uh wait for a couple minutes watch how this series ends as this is bound to be very exciting but yes of course if you are interested uh, uh please do uh, really, I mean, even if you want to uh, to ask somebody in chat as well, we have moderators to, in there. They are more than happy to direct you where you need to go. But Lars, thank you so much for that. And we are underway. It's game number five. The Rhinos and the Comets. This one will decide it as Bean Machine will score. And the Rhinos out to an early lead. We haven't seen it yet in the series. This is, we are seeing such a change of pace from the Rhinos. At the end of that last game, they were down 4-2 to against the Comets, and now this makes four goals in a row. The Rhinos have scored unanswered. That is wonderful for their momentum, and it's going to do wonders going forward through Game 5. The Machine has to make a save. Rebound out in front. They'll score, and just like that, we're back level 1-1. That is just unfortunate. I think Bean Machine did everything they could. They just got caught out alone on defense. And all you can really ask of somebody in that situation is to make that initial save. You can't really do much about where it's going to go. I know we parked on getting it clear of the net, but that's not something Bean Machine was really in a position to do. So kudos on making the save. But again, we see where the comments that aggressive forward play style 
is so advantageous, and the Rhino is trying to replicate, but the Comet's defense stands resolute. Ooh, Crazy Cow caught looking for boost. He's going to get punished for it. Otaku Expert with the second of the game there. And, you know, we talked a lot about Stufi and how they were leading the team in goals coming into this one. But in the past couple of games and so far here in game five, it's been Otaku Expert to knock these home. And will this be beginning of the end here for the Rhinos? Otaku Expert with two. And now a 2-1 lead for the Comets as we cross over this first minute. Crazy Cow has to make a play. The machine going to rush forward off the touch. It should fall safely into the corner. Stufi, no touch there. Crazy Cow looking for the shot. Bounces out in front. The machine can't get around it to put it on net. That should be an easy clear for Stufi out, at least out to the midfield line. We look to see both teams going to reset here. Still a 2-1 game. Love the speed and the pace of play. We mentioned it earlier where the teams aren't really making missed touches because they're not going fast enough. But here, we've seen both of them ratchet it up and add in a little bit of an element we haven't seen before. Is that's in front of the net, but Otaku able to clear it away and turn this one back the other way. And now this is threatening on the Rhino's end. Oh, Otaku expert around Bean Machine, but it will be saved away. Crazy Cow with an opening, no! but Bean Machine plays it far. Not sure what happened there, but the goal taken away. Still out in front, they'll score. So the goal not lost. They just wanted to add a little bit of drama to the stream there. We're tied at two. What a roller coaster of emotions. Oh my goodness, going back and forth. First, the awesome opportunity on the Comets net, and then the Comets barely getting saved going back the other way. And then you get the open net, and then Bean Machine plays the corner. And oh my gosh, it's too much. I have to check my heart rate. I'm up to 105. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, you better calm down here, Lars. We still got three minutes left. And there's an own goal from Otaku. He's been putting him in the Rhino's goal. And unfortunately, he's going to put that one in his own net this time. And it's 3-2. That is one of the reasons we haven't mentioned Otaku very often in the early part of the series is we also haven't seen them make missed touches like that. And it's just uncharacteristic for the Comets in general to be out of position and make bad touches that result in Rhino's goals. But here, Rhino's, hey, we take those, and that is going to be the second lead of the game for them. Now they just need to hold on to it. It uh, feels like an eternity left on the clock with how back and forth this game is gone. This beam machine is going to put that into the big corner. Here comes Crazy Cow rotating forward. However, Stoopy will turn them around and back into the Rhino zone we go. Win at the midfield line there for Beam Machine. Now it's the Comets kind of getting suffocated in their own zone for a little while, though a bit of a giveaway. Stoopy now out in front. Beam Machine trying to play this one away. He'll get it by Otaku Expert. And it's Crazy Cow looking to create in the pink zone. Here comes Beam Machine out in front. Can't quite knock it through. And it will stay a 3-2 game. Two minutes left to go. And now it's up to the Comets to try to figure out how to send us over time. Ooh, that's going to be dangerous. As now the Comets get the open net going back the other way. Can they get oh, it? That looks like it? it's wide of net. But it's going to tuck in just off the corner. A talk of good finish to tie this one up with a minute 43 to go. Man, and that first touch, very, very close. I'm sure he was on the edge of his seat there as that one falls into the back of the net. And we are tied 3-3. Three, three. A minute 43 left to go. A Stoofy, a laser beam from midfield in the Comets. Just like that, they'll regain the lead. This is... This has been such a roller coaster. I can't handle it. Hunted, save me. I, I may need CPR or or the defibrillator when we're done here because my heart is all over the place. I, I have faith. I have faith. The Rhinos can score again, and I want to see Game Five overtime decided. Here we go. 90 seconds left. Bean Machine looking for the equalizer. Stoopy. Right into Crazy Cow wins the challenge. That one's going to be a bit wide. It'll bounce out in front of Taku Expert. Fires a shot, saved away. Stoofy now looking to create. That's going to go high. And it bounces back into the corner. 70 seconds left to go. Bean Machine 
Eyes that one up, waves it away. Here's Stoopy yet again. This time it's being machine. Needs to get a pass. He's gone. Got to find the touch to score it though. Stoopy will turn it away. Crazy Cow can't get underneath of it and things going to level yet again. Stoofy sneaks it home and the Comets take a two-goal lead. That is so important for the Comets right now. I know we saw them run away in game two and three, but how the Rhinos have been playing, one goal's not enough. You need to have that cushion goal. And here, this still isn't over. We've seen the Rhinos score twice in less than a minute. Here, they need to, but we know they can there's Bean Machine opening this time. Score. The Rhinos off the kickoff. Back to within one. That is a great read from Bean Machine. That first touch a little off gets it wide, but that negative angle to cut it back. We've been looking for Bean Machine. They've been looking for these mechanical plays. We've been looking for them to execute on these mechanical plays. And now we're seeing it clutch at the end of game five here. 40 seconds, all that remains. Crazy Cow gonna play it out of the zone. The Rhinos need one more to send us to OT here in game five. As they look to continue their undefeated season, Stoofy uh, going to play it back into the zone. Now Bean Machine, 23 seconds left. That'll be a pass down to Crazy Cow, blocked away by Otaku Expert. Still in their zone are the Rhinos, gotta turn this one around, not a whole lot of time left, Stoofy. He was looking to waste some more time. Bean Machine back to the midfield. Stoofy got to cut that one off yet again, and we're down to five seconds now. Bean Machine. Biotech expert. This is up in the air. Crazy Cow. He's got to put it in, but he can't control it. And that's going to do it. The Comets somehow managed to hang on, and they take game five. Not only do they take game five, but they hand the Rhinos their first series loss of the season. Stoofy. An otaku expert. What a combo. What a pairing. If you are looking forward, if the Comets find their way into the playoffs, they're going to be looking for this combo. I guarantee it to carry them up and through the playoffs. Well, it was a wonderful series. And again, otaku expert, three goals on five shots. A hat trick here in game five. And exactly what the doctor ordered for the Comets in these final games. It really looked like the Rhinos. Uh, we're, we're on their way back to making sure that they stayed undefeated this season. But a very, very good back and forth battle in game five decided by the pink side. And well played to them. I mean, congratulations. It makes the uh, it makes the FL power rankings look a little bit closer now. Yeah, you cannot be disappointed with the series. Every time I watch one of these series, I feel like I've been had. I sit here and I think, this is Foundation League? No. This can't be Foundation League. They're too good for Foundation League. But moving on, first of all, we've got a raffle for Power A. I just want to throw that out there. I know it's been seen in chat. Power A is a sponsor of the channel. So if you're looking for a new controller, make sure you hit them up. They do Xbox style controllers. And I know I'm personally using an Xbox style controller. So it's a great resource if you need one. But moving on, speaking of being had, we saw the Foundation League. We saw the level of play that the lowest level in MLE brings. So now we're going to jump to the highest level. Our next series, when we come back from the intermission, is going to be Premier League action. This is the top of the top, the cream of the crop. And we are going to be so excited to bring it to you. So make sure, come back after the intermission, stick around. We will be right back.